Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel. Folks, my name is Clyde Lindsay. I'm from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for joining us this week in our Twinkle Tips Friday video on, it, on our series in X Lights and working and doing different things. What we want to do today, folks, is we want to focus on something that's a little bit more geared towards sequencing. And I know a lot of you might be really interested, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. So folks, today my goal is to begin to show you something about the in and out transitions and how they kind of benefit and work with different things in x lights to help you become uh, a little bit more dialed in, a little bit more grounded with x lights and, and learning a couple new uh, nuances maybe you didn't know before. But I'm going to show you a couple things today. I have about three effects planned that I want to share with you, but I want to show how you might think that they work in X lights, and then I'm going to show you how they can work with transitions. Let's get started with the on effect. I'm just going to come over here, grab it, and bring it down and put it down here. And I, I want to I, I want to kind of build this up so that you see different ways that you can accomplish things in X lights. Now, if you wanted to, let's say, transition from the on effect to the butterfly effect that's underneath of it, you could tell here that it might not, it's pretty stark. So one of the things that you might do is you might want to reveal using, let's say, the curtain effect, which is in X lights. We come up here with the little curtain, and it looks like a curtain. There's a curtain there with a swag and a curtain there. We can grab that effect and throw it right on there. And that in and of itself is its own kind of transition from one effect to another. One is presenting, now if you wanted to go faster, you could make it shorter so it's a quick transition maybe you've got a little beat or a pop you want to move from one effect quickly to the next and all i've done here is i've just used the color white we were using the color white the on effect is white and we're just transitioning from this into the uh, butterfly effect well now you can do this uh you can do this a, a couple different ways uh but uh, the other thing that you might consider is if we add a transition or a time period that you allow the effect to make the transition uh, from. Now, how do we find out how far of a transition we need? Well, we usually base it on the music or whatever is playing, and we kind of set our transition to fit that change in time. And to do that, you could pick out a period in music up here in the waveform, click and drag, and when you do, you see these little numbers over here. It says selected. Uh, selected is 0.65. Maybe that's exactly what you need your transition to be. So what you can do is you can stretch this over here, and you can physically enter in 0.65 as your transition. Now, notice we have the, the fantastic use of the fade out transition uh, built in. That's the first default setting. But also, you could use another transition that's called wipe. Now, there is, in this instance, if we change it to wipe, you can see that, oh, look, it went from bottom to top. So there's a couple other options built into the wipe transition, which is useful. And that wipe transition might be, uh, you might want it to go from bottom to top. Maybe you want it to go from top to bottom. Well, we could hit the reverse here, and you can see it transitioned from top to bottom. Now, what if you wanted it to go from left to right? Well, that's what this here slider is for. And if we go over, let's change it to zero. Oh, look, it, it, it went the other way. It kind of reversed it from top to bottom. Well, now what if we put the number 25? That's halfway. What happens? Ah, now we get this transition from right to left, but we want it from left to right. Let's change it and reverse it. And now you can figure out that we've done the exact same thing as we did with the curtain effect, and we're able to still do our kind of reveal using that curtain type of transition. So the next thing that I want to show you is uh, how there are some effects that work a certain way. We call them warp effects, and they warp things. You can see how they're useful. Let's go ahead and build an effect for you. Let's put down a text effect, 
and there's our text. I used a shortcut key. And let's um, let's grab a, uh, I don't know, let's spell out a word. Hello. hello. There we go. We've got the word hello. Now, one of the things that you might consider doing is you might use the warp effect. I'll grab that here and I'll bring that down. Now the warp effect has something in it called treatments and one of the treatments is uh, one of three is in, out, and constant. And think of that as an in transition, right? So what if we go from water drops to this circular swirl? And as you can see here, we have this constant treatment where it's it's kind of just swabbling all over the place right now. But if we were thinking, oh, I want this as an in transition, and then you play the effect, now you get to see, oh, look, it's doing this little animation before it gets started, and now it's revealing it. Now, what if, what if you did this exact same thing? We went back to the warp effect, and we changed this to the out, and now you have a in and an out. So it's a way for you to use an effect that works with the warp and the, uh, the you know the text effect here. But also, also we can do another thing with this, and we can utilize the transitions. So let's say we want let let's let's just go in and look at the options. So in the transitions, there's a number of options. One of those is circular swirl right here. And if we go ahead and select that on the out, and let's say it, we give it a 0.5, you could also use the drop down. The drop down has a 0.5 attached to it, and then we can do the same thing with the in transition, and we can do 0.5, and we can do this circular swirl again. And here we go. We have the exact same thing. Again, two different ways to do this in X Lights. I think this is really interesting, and if you haven't played with this, well, I think it's very much worth it to give it a shot. But the last thing that I want to show you is also uh, also has to deal with uh, the 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 a transition in another sense. We have let's say the fill effect. Now, many people aren't familiar with the fill effect. It's kind of an often not used, not loved effect. It has so much value in it. And I'm going to show you here just a second. Now, I've already showed you the wipe transition, um, but I'm going to show you in a different way how just basically an effect can become a wipe transition. If you're not familiar with the fill effect, the fill effect, it can take multiple colors and it stacks them together and it creates this thing called a gradient. That gradient leads you from the color order on the color palette and it faces those colors, it directs them in a layer that's called in the direction here under the fill effect. You look at, you, you can change the direction. You can do up, down, so from the top down, from the left to right. Uh, now I'll, go, I'll just switch this back to the default, which is up. Uh, whenever you add this into your layout, one of the interesting things that you can do is we can change the position of the fill effect. And this is where the name fill comes from. It fills in for you. So here we can go in and we can use the value curve that's built into the fill effect position and we can select it. Now I have this one here, it's kind of goofy, but uh, if we just have this ramp from zero, which, which we saw earlier was the nothing position all the way to the top position, you can see that it ramps it all the way up. Now, why is that useful? Well, if we go ahead and we grab another one of these effects right here and we remove that value curve, look what happens when we play this effect. We have that fill or that you know, that, that, um, that fill transition, if you will. Now we've already, we've already said, we've already said you can always use the transition uh, before uh, you can change this transition to one uh, one transition with a wipe, and we can reverse it. So we know that we can do this from bottom to top. It's the exact same thing, right? There's two different ways to do this. But here's one thing that you can't do with transitions that you actually can do with the fill effect, which is go in, play with your um, value curve a little bit, just like you saw earlier. We can go to a custom, and we could we could figure out the different beats and different songs, and we could have different up and down moments where we could hit certain levels on the tree with a, with the beat of the music. And if we go ahead and click that, 
see what happens it kind of grows up and down and up and and it looks like it's bouncing to the beat when you've actually just kind of made it do some fa fancy little value curve on the fill position so that was the third thing that i wanted to share with you but but keep in mind there's a lot of other things that these transitions can do um, because you can't do that fancy transition with with the uh, value curve oh but well maybe can you what if we what if we um, what if we did the same thing here with the fancy custom value curve we went from here down to here up to here down to here and up and we had that at one. Oh, look at that it's just another way for you to kind of play around in X lights to see, hey, what all does this do? What exactly does this do? And this is why I think it's important for you guys to kind of get away from your, your standard treatments whenever it comes to the in and the out transitions and have a little bit of fun and maybe play around with some of the things that are hidden right in front of you inside X lights. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Twinkle Tips Friday. If you did, please give us a huge thumbs up. If you haven't done yet, so hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications so you never miss one of our exciting episodes of Twinkle Tip Fridays. You never know what we're going to teach. And it's helpful if you share what you'd like to learn in the comment section down below. Please don't forget to do that. And if you want some cool shirts just like this, go head over to pixelprodisplays.com. Click on the store and look for the gear, and you can find t-shirts there as well as maybe consider joining the ppd sequence club where we do one awesome sequence each and every month you get a choice of three through the ppd triple play you get huge discounts people are saving tens of thousands of dollars years into the hobby because they're buying from the ppd club affiliate vendors and saving hundreds of dollars on their orders for pixels controllers and whatnot guys thank you for joining us this is clyde signing out it's we'll see you in the next video Take care and bye for now.